In today's video, we have got details of a backstage romance, two new signings, and it's going to be one wild night in today's episode of King Regal's New Empire. Hello, 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 people. Welcome back to the channel. It is me, Taylor Made Gaming, and here we are with episode two of Regal's New Empire. Just want to say before we get started, thank you to everybody that's watched the first episode. It has done phenomenal numbers. I'm so sorry it's taken so long to get episode two out to you. But with the football Euros going on, I've had to prioritise videos and other things for that. But now that that is pretty much over and done with, hopefully once football has come home again, we should be getting weekly videos on this series. So if you are back from episode one, thank you so much for sticking with me. And yep. Let's get into it. Let's introduce you to the details of this backstage romance. You can see here, it's Alexis Falcon and Chris Brooks that have begun dating. So maybe might have to start using them two in segments together on our shows. See how well they work. See if they can help build each other's popularity. Should be interesting. Could be an interesting match. Not sure how long it's going to work out for, but we shall see going forward. And you can see as well, Lana Austin has got a bruised kidney. It's not supposed to stop her from working, but she's not going to be on tonight's show. Just because I just don't want to risk it getting any worse and her being out for quite a long period of time. So we're not going to be seeing her on tonight's show. And also, let's go and have a look at our new signings, yeah? The first new signing is Benton Destruction. I love his face paint. I love his look. I've got quite a few ideas for what we could do for him going forward. You can see he's going to be working as a heel. He's going to be debuting a monster gimmick. And if I just move my camera over to here... You can see that he's got quite decent stats for basics, safety, power and resilience. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how he gets on. But he is not going to be debuting alone. Because I have brought in someone who I think could be a quite good tag team partner for him. This guy, Jim Diehard. Again, he's got quite a cool mask. I quite like the look of that. And if you look at his photo and destructions, I think they look like they go well together. So, uh, where's he gone? There he is down there. Jim Diehard. And again, he's got very good stats for menace, basics, safety, toughness. And so, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing how Bent on Destruction and Jim Diehard get on together. And so we are going to be naming them as the team, which very creative name. I think you will agree. If I can, if I can get on the right screen, that would be nice. There we go. Die Hard Destruction. I quite like that name. Tell me down below if you like it or if you would prefer something else for them. Or even if they've teamed in real life and they've used a different name. Please do let me know. So, yeah. Looking forward to seeing how they get on. Uh, I'll be back with you in a second now, once I've booked the show and once it's all ready to go. So see you in a second. We are once again in the 1865 in Southampton, Southern England for tonight's event. So let's go and get into it. In the first segment of the night, William Regal is in the ring. First up, he announces that there will be a 10-man battle royal tonight for a spot in the PCW heavyweight title match at our next event, which will be in our next episode. And after he's done announcing that, he gets interrupted by the guy whose name I can't say. I know there was a comment after the last video, but I've completely forgotten how you told me to pronounce it right now. 
So we're going to go with Aistin Rees. I know that's wrong. I'm going to read the comment. I'm going to put it on the screen or however you point to it. I don't know how these cameras work. But, yeah, we're going to put the comment on the screen telling me how to pronounce it, and we're going to see how wrong I've got it. So, yeah, Aistin Rees and Cara Noir, they both say that they shouldn't be in that Battle Royal. They should have a one-on-one -on -one match for the other spot in the PCW Heavyweight title match. And so William Regal agrees, and that will be our main event for this evening. And this segment gets us a 44. Aistin Rees has debuted his old school hill gimmick. It's got an or it's got a rating of awful. That's not good. Cara Noir has debuted his Black Swan gimmick. That's got an initial rating of great. And Tom Campbell, who is on commentary alone for this segment, has debuted his staff member gimmick, which again has got an awful gimmick, which I think is quite harsh. How can anything about Tom Campbell be awful? The man's a national treasure. The man's brilliant. But yep, and again, the hint at a regal face turn didn't go down well. Who still remember his recent turn? Might just have to keep him heel just for the time being and then change him at a later date. But this angle got the show off to a strong start. 44? I'm happy with that. Next up, we've got our first match of the night, and it's a triple threat match. It's Jim Hunter versus Ashley Dunn versus Drew Parker. And in a decent match, which got us a rating of 32, Jim Hunter got the win when he pinned Parker with a swanton bomb. Jim Hunter got an in-ring performance of 29. Ashley Dunn only got a 20, which is a little bit worrying. Drew Parker got a 34, so the best of the match, even though he lost. And Drew Parker debuted his crazy gimmick, and it got an initial rating of very good. And apparently, Jim Hunter was really off his game. So he's off his game, but he's still getting the second best rating in the match. Not terrible. Hopefully, he can improve in the future. Yet, 32 for that rating. The match got the crowd buzzing. Exactly what you want. Would have liked a better rating, but what you going to do? And then that is followed up by a women's tag team match. It's Martina and Rhea O'Reilly versus Jamie Hayter and Little Miss Roxy. And in a good match, Jamie Hayter and Little Miss Roxy got the win when Rhea, when Jamie Hayter sorry, pinned Martina with a falcon arrow. And Little Miss Roxy was the weak link in this match. And the segment got us a 37. So I'm quite happy with that. For a women's tag match, I don't think that's too bad for at the start of a save. So I'm very happy with that. Rhea O'Reilly got a 34. Martina got a 38. Little Miss Roxy, as expected, only got a 23. And Jamie Hayter got a 38. So her and Martina both got the same rating. So maybe that might be a one-on-one -on -one match on our next show we'll have to wait and see but martina has debuted her session moth gimmick it's got an initial rating of great and jamie hater's cocky gimmick has got an initial rating of adequate and rio o'reilly little miss roxy they're both getting better at their gimmicks and this match got the crowd hotter so everything so far is going okay. And then next up, we have got prospects in the ring. Prospect are saying how they know there will soon be tag team championships in this promotion. And they want to be the ones who are at the forefront of challenging and perhaps even holding that championship. So they put out a challenge to another tag team who want to be in the forefront of the division. That challenge gets accepted by more than hype. And in a decent match, Prospect get the win over more than hype when Alex Gracie submitted Nathan Martin after blatantly cheated. He did what Dan Housen tells everybody to do. He punched him in the groin. That is what he did, and that's how he got the win. The segment gets us a 35. 
Nathan Martin got a 35 in ring. Darren Kearney got a 37. And, well, Prospect, little bit disappointing. Liam Slater only getting a 30. And Alex Gracie a 19. I think that's the worst of the night so far. Might have to rethink using Prospect if you're going to keep on getting ratings like that. But Darren Kearney's gimmick got an initial rating of very good. And Nathan Martin's got an initial rating of adequate. And Kearney and Martin got a tag team specialist bonus. So, nice to see for them. And then, after that, Grado is in the ring. He's talking, he's hyping the crowd up. But then, the lights go off. And when they come back on, it is the brand new tag team of Benton Destruction who are in the ring. And they attack him and they brutalise him. They leave Grado down and out and hurt and needing medical attention as they just stare at him and laugh. They just laugh at him and they just keep on laughing until they eventually leave the ring. And so that is Those Boys debuted. Segment only getting a 28 is a little bit disappointing. Bent on Destruction's monster gimmick, got an initial rating of great. Die Hard debuted his crazy gimmick, and that only got an adequate. And the storyline between Grado and Bent on Destruction has begun. What's going to happen in the future? You're going to have to keep watching to find out. And now it is time for the 10 man battle royal to see who will be in the PCW Heavyweight Championship match next month. And, well, you can see we've got a lot of major stars for this promotion in this match. We've got Bonesaw, we've got Ridgeway, we've got Mambo, Corvin, Allmark, Money, Kid Lycos, LJ Cleary, Robbie X and Say Persa. And... In a match that went 12 minutes and 5 seconds, Bonesaw got the win. Bonesaw also got the most eliminations over the course of the match. The other final four were Cleary, Corvin and Money, with Cleary being the runner-up. But Bonesaw just showed that he is just too menacing for everybody else. And he picked up the win in a segment that got us a 44, which I'm very happy with. And also, what I'm happy with is that Bonesaw debuted his gimmick. That got a very good, as did Chuck Mambo's dude gimmick. Corvin only got an adequate, but Allmark, Money and Cleary, their babyface and fan favourite gimmicks, all got a very good. So I'm very, very happy with how that has gone. Next up, it is that man, Aiston Rees, versus Cara Noir, in the main event of the evening. And in a match that had fantastic heat and great wrestling, Cara Noir defeated Aiston Rees in 14 minutes 52, with a package pile driver. This segment got us a 48. Aiston Reeves got a 37. Cara Noir got a 47. So, the right man got the win. So, the main event of our next event is going to be Cara Noir versus Bonesaw for the PCW Heavyweight Championship match. And just as everybody thinks, that is the end of the show. Bonesaw comes back out, gets into the ring and completely lays out Cara Noir and stands tall above him as the show ends. That segment got us a 41 and the storyline between Noir and Bonesaw has begun and Bonesaw is getting better at his gimmick. And so that is the end of the show. I'm going to predict we got 44, a 44 for the show. Let's see, was I correct? 46! Oh, that's better than I expected. 
I am very, very happy with how that has gone. So that is a decent show. It's increased our popularity in southern England, I'm guessing. And so, guys, that is where we are going to leave it for today. If you've enjoyed that video, pop a massive thumbs up down below. Subscribe to the channel for more Total Extreme Wrestling content. It's going to be more regular now. Football manager content, bus simulator content, and whatever else stuff I managed to come up with in my brain. And so, guys, follow me on Twitter uh, at Taylor M Game, Taylor Made Gaming. Taylor, it's one of the two. I'll put it up above. And so, guys, thank you so much for watching. I shall see you next time. Bye.